Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, I'm gonna go over Home Assistant dashboards. As always, if you prefer a more detailed written version, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description just below that like button. So Home Assistant dashboard is kind of the first thing you see when you log into a Home Assistant instance. So if you already have that set up or if you want to know how to set up Home Assistant to begin with, pause this video, check the links in the description. There's videos there on how to get everything set up. So in this video, it's going to be kind of a step after you've already got everything set up, all your different integrations, all your different uh, devices, automations, whatever. This is going to be all about the Lovelace dashboard. That's what the sort of front page, the control page of Home Assistant is called, Lovelace. It's going to be all about customizing it, how to install themes, how to install custom cards that give you even more functionality than what is there to begin with. And hopefully this will make it pretty easy to set up just the way you like it. So this is going to be mainly done uh, on the computer. So let's jump into that now. Okay, so to get started with themes, pretty much they're all going to require uh, hacks, which is Home Assistant Community Store. So we're going to go ahead and download that first and get it installed as well. Uh, if you need help with it, you can always go to hacks.xyz and you can follow along their installation guide there, which is kind of what we're going to do, but some parts aren't mega clear, so hence the video. So the first thing we are going to do is we need to have a particular add-on installed, this one, Terminal and SSH. If you don't have that, go to the add-on store and just scroll down until you see it, tap on it, get it installed. Uh, there's pretty much nothing to it. You just have to get it installed and start it. And that's, that, that's pretty much it for that part of it. You will then open up the web UI. So for hacks, you're also going to need a GitHub account. So if you don't already have one, just go on over to github.com and or github.org.com and create a new account. It's obviously free and very straightforward, but you will need it eventually in order to authenticate it, as you will see. So if we go back to our terminal and SSH, if we open up that web UI, we're greeted with this screen. So what we're going to do is if we go to the hacks and then installation, there's this little nice little snippet of code that we're going to copy, paste, and hit enter. So it's very quick, it's very easy, very small, and then we're going to go ahead and do a quick restart. Okay, it looks like we're, we have restarted. So the next part is then going to be to configure it. So the way we do that is we go back to configuration and integrations. So in order to, for it to show up, we need to clear our browser cache. So if you're using Safari, you're gonna to go to your preferences. Um, you're going to go to advanced, I believe. Show developer in menu and then develop, we're gonna empty caches. And now, hopefully, hacks should show up. There we go. So yeah, so if you could, you have to empty that cache, if you're using Chrome, do it however Chrome does it, if you're using Safari, get that develop page and empty caches, then when you type in hacks, it'll show up. If you don't feel comfortable with all this, one thing I'd recommend actually is to go to supervisor, go to snapshots, and create a full snapshot. That's basically a backup of Home Assistant. Create a full one, download it. So when, when it's done, you can actually click on download snapshot. That way, if anything goes wrong during this process, you can always just basically uh, start from scratch, re restore that, and everything will be back to just the way it was. HACS, install, check all these boxes, and submit. Okay, now we're gonna go to GitHub. So we're gonna Click on this link to open up our GitHub account, sign in, and then it's gonna ask us to type in this code. It's gonna be unique for everyone, so just type in whatever it shows up for you. And authorize hacks. You're all set. This should now realize that. And it's gonna ask you where you wanna set it up. Awesome. I always put all the sort of uh, hubs and everything in my fake control room and hit finish. And now on the left-hand side of your screen, you will see hacks. 
And this is basically where you can add in crazy fun things. So now, if, for, for example, if you type in home assistant themes and go to that second link. So if you type in home assistant themes and you go to the latest theme topics, this is the community forum. And you can basically look at all the cool different themes that people have created. Um, you can sort by views to get the ones that are the biggest. Share, obviously, it's going to be people that have shared everything. Midnight theme, a lot of sort of dark mode stuff going on. So one of the cool ones that I like is the iOS because I think uh, the way that, that iOS handles smart home stuff is pretty nice. So if we go to integrate, if we go to front end actually, I'm sorry. Front end, if we type in iOS, we've got a couple different dark mode, dark mode ones. I like this one that is dark and light mode. I've already got it installed from before, but at the information. Once you install it, it'll be there. And then if you click on information, it'll tell you kind of how to set it up and the few things you need. So that's going to be our next step. So if you got that installed, go ahead and then scroll down and copy paste this code. So we're going to go into our file editor, configuration.yaml at the very top here. We're going to paste this in front end, basically look for themes here very straightforward and safe. Okay, so when we put in this code, we've got to get rid of the hashtag your configuration and just have it like this front end and then themes and then save. And then if you restart Haas, it should then be able to work. So let's see. And it has started. So now I'm pretty sure if everything went well, if you click on your profile in the bottom left corner, the very bottom, you should now have the option about theme and you can choose which theme you want. And yes, I can. I've got 28 different iOS dark mode themes. So I'm going to go dark mode. Let's try dark blue and boom. If I go to overview now, I've got this sort of dark blue iOS looking um, theme. Okay. So now that we have our themes installed, I'm going to go over a couple of my favorite themes because there's a lot of them out there and what you'll find is a lot of them are just sort of contrast colors and stuff that, you know, maybe, maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but I just want to show some of the ones that I think are more interesting and take a little bit further than just changing the contrasting colors. So if we go to hacks and we go to front end, that's where our themes are going to be. Obviously I like the iOS one. Uh, so we've got a couple of different ones. The iOS Dark Mode by Juan M Tech, a uh, great YouTube channel, great source for home assistant stuff. That one's really good. You got your dark modes, etc. So I quite like the iOS Dark Mode. And that's the one you're looking at right now, actually. Uh, vintage is pretty cool. Vintage, if you really want to go completely different, you can install Vintage. And it's going to give it a very sort of like retro 50s vibe. So if we go down to our profile, we want to check out what vintage looks like. Boom, it looks crazy. Very, very different. Uh, very contrasting colors. Uh, very, very different, very noticeable. Probably not something I would use all the time, but kudos to the developer because it is pretty cool and it's very different. Next up is Noctis. Noctis is probably one of my favorite ones. We can go ahead and install it real quick and apply it. Very simple, but still just sort of elegant, um, good colors, nothing too special about it, but just like a nice theme. Then we've got Google. This one, you got your light theme and your dark theme. Uh, dark theme. I prefer dark. So if we can install it, it kind of just has the same sort of vibes as a Google Home Hub. So if you happen to use those, you'll probably know what it looks like. Uh, let's see, Google dark theme. And again, they all look pretty similar at the end of the day. There's not a lot of difference between them. It's going to come down to a lot of particular cards that might, it, might make it look different than others. But as you can tell, and again, they're all mainly color related. There's not a lot of actual like changes, but th there can be. And that's what we're going to look at right now. And that is cards. 
So cards refer to these physical sort of like the borders and what is inside them. Uh, for, for the most part, everything you're looking at right now is just the entities card where you can just add your different entities and it'll basically just give you a, um, a toggle so you can turn them on or off. Very straightforward. You can tap on it to get different brightnesses, different colors, etc. Nothing particularly special about it. But there are some cooler ones. So you've got your weather. That's a nice little forecast. Um, people have like radars and stuff integrated. If you use dark sky, you can integrate dark sky into things. So the first one is going to be the RGB light card. That is this right here, where basically we get to just click on our favorite colors for a particular light or a, like a group of lights if you have it set up as like a scene and just makes it very easy to change things about. So I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and edit it so you can see what it looks like. Basically, you, ha you have to mess with the code a little bit, but essentially all you're doing is taking the entity itself. So for me, it, it just bedroom light for now, but you could put a group of lights if you wanted. And then you can just have all these different favorites and you can customize exactly which one. The downside is it has to be RGB values or HS values. Um, you can just be like blue or green or red, etc. That's the only downside. But again, if you just go to, if you just Google RGB color wheel picker, you can then very easily, so you can easily kind of just click around, figure out what color you want. It'll tell you the RGB values and then you just type them in here. And then you can quickly and easily jump around. Your transition is basically how quickly it transitions. I usually just leave it at one and that's pretty nice. Um, I will leave links to how to get all this installed. Um, all of these are actually going to be installed through Hacks, so I'll show that in a second as well. So if you were just go to Hacks, go to the front end, and if you search RGB light card, boom, there it is. You just click on install and you get the light card. You might have to uh, refresh the page or reload your cache for the browser for it to work. Sometimes you have to uh, reload it for it to show up, but very straightforward. The next one that I really like is, is the slider. So this is the, um, the slider one. What's nice about this is you can very easily, obviously just choose the brightness of something. And it doesn't have to just be brightness. You, you can do temperature, um, you can do volume. If it's like a media or something like that, I prefer just the um, brightness of whatever lights I have. And you can again, customize it. So you very easy, you choose what um, entity you want to show up under. And now you can very easily slide around the brightness of your lights. So obviously if these are dimmable, that's what you're gonna want. If they're not, then you're not gonna be able to do it. Especially if you use something like an iPad or an iPhone or uh, whatever touchscreen device to adjust to like, uh, interface with your home assistant, then it's nice that you can do it, do it very easily versus tapping on this and then sliding it around. Next up is uh, the simple thermostat. Uh, my Ecobee's acting up right now, but just a very simple, easy way of controlling your thermostat. So you got your temperature, uh, where you got a set to, you can turn it off, heat, cool, either or, and that's it. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, I like it. And the last one is just this mini, is this simple graph. Useful if you want to track any sort of data um, in a very sort of simple way without uh, it being too in your face or anything. Um, I just have the temperatures from my different sensors. Just a simple, elegant way. You can also track all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Anything that's a sensor, you can track. So if you want to check the battery life of whatever device, you can do that. If you want to track uh, your internet usage, um, packets lost, stuff like that, you can do that as well. Uh, very simple, but pretty useful. One thing you'll notice a lot of people do is have these sort of like squares. And for the longest time, I did not know how people did it because it wasn't very straightforward. But the way you get it is actually by using the grid card configuration. So if you go to add card, you scroll down a little until you find grid. The grid card is basically what allows you to have these square cards. Um, so if you do button, that's basically how you get it. So you get a whole bunch of buttons and that's how you get them to be nice and square and it very looks, looks very sort of iOS-esque and very sort of similar to that on uh, mobile devices because it's very easy to sort of click on them. And again, you can do any sort of device you want. You can do scenes, you can do um, automations if you really wanted to to get everything working. Uh, 
this is great because you can make it smaller. If you edit this to have more columns, you have five columns and now it's much smaller so you can pack more in there. It's a very efficient way of getting a lot of stuff in there and have it look really nice as well. The big cards or cards that anything that uses the icon, so here we got like light bulbs, here we got this sort of like uh, ceiling light. Whenever you go to edit it, it's quite frustrating that there's no drop down or anything. It's just has or has dot or colon and then light. I don't know that these are called material design icons. If you search material design icons dot com, you can then see every single one. And I, I imagine this is where it's all gathered from and there's a ton of them. So the easiest way to do it is if you type in light, for example, you can now see all the different ones that are lights. So here we've got light strip, light switch, light bulb, all sorts of things, uh, groups, not groups, uh, shaded, outlines, whatever. But all of these are, are accessible within Helm Assistant. So for example, I've got the light strip variant. Here we go, light switch, let's do that. So light strip switch. Cool, so I'm gonna go to my guest bedroom. This one is just like a, is I guess what the default is, is for light switch is a sort of lightning arc. Um, I don't care for that, it doesn't really make sense. So instead I'm gonna go and hit edit. And here I'm gonna type in Haas light dash switch. And now it looks like a light switch. I save it, now I've got a light switch here. So yeah, so all of these uh, icons that are available are gonna be in materialdesignicons.com. And there you have it. I mean, like I said, it's all gonna be pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but it does make it that much a little bit more customizable. And there you have it. How to install themes, all the different sort of themes that you can get, a couple of my favorites, all the different add-on cards that I personally like that I think are really cool that add a lot of functionality to the Home Assistant dashboard. And hopefully that'll give you some ideas on how you can customize your own uh, Home Assistant dashboard so it fits your needs and your sort of household uh, perfectly. As always, links to everything are down in the description. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. And until next time, see ya.